Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hopefully, in about 45 minutes, you're going to be even more beautiful because the topic of today's talk is about eating for beauty and how to introduce more beautifying feuds. Feuds. We don't want them. They're like fights, aren't they? Family feuds. More beautifying foods into your diet and life so that you can be radiant and glowing like my next guest is. So my guest, Lee Holmes, is trained in Ayurveda and she's helped. She's also trained in the art of healing herself because she went through some health challenges and came across some information that helped her uh, surpass those challenges and is now using that motivation, that sort of personal story, which I'll be talking about in my talk after this in how to create and scale a movement, plugging my own talk, sorry, back to Lee. So she used her personal story to be able to, uh, to heal herself but also channel that into her work so she can help others. And it's a really, really beautiful story and I'm excited for the work that she gets to do and excited that we get to share her message with more people. Lee Holmes on Eating for Beauty. Can we give her a big round of applause? Thank you, Lee. It's still Hi, guys. Can you hear me? My microphone's a bit dodged, but can you hear me okay? Yeah? I have a presentation for you today. Um, I'm also going to do some cooking. So if you guys want to get up and help, ask me any questions, that would be really amazing. I'm going to do a, um, a smoothie bowl that's really easy to make in the mornings. You can even do it the night before. And I'm going to do a chilled avocado soup recipe, which I hope that you'll love. And it's really super easy with just simple ingredients. I think it's about four ingredients, so it's really yum. Here we go. So how to eat yourself beautiful. So just a little bit about me. I've written, I think it's actually about eight cookbooks now. I don't know if you guys have been on my website. It's called superchargedfood.com. Have you guys, anyone been on there? Yeah? There's lots of recipes on there and videos. Just really simple, easy recipes with everyday ingredients that, you know, that you can just buy from supermarket or wherever you, where, wherever you buy your ingredients. Nothing from the wilds of the Congo, nothing too crazy, nothing that you can't pronounce, nothing too expensive, just very sort of everyday ingredients and simple recipes. So when I was um, younger, I studied nutrition and I went to cooking school, but then I never did anything with my qualifications at all. I just went and worked at the ABC because I wanted to work in kids' music because I was like, I, you know, I was a single parent, I was like, I'd love to sort of work in kids' music, and that's what I did. And um, just to update you on my story and how I kind of got into writing books and blogging, I was working at the ABC one day, um, and I started to be really tired in a meeting, and I went home, and I woke up the next day, and I found all this hair on my pillow. Um, my hair started to fall out. And then I had all these hives just covering my whole body. You know, has anyone here ever had hives? No, that you have? so itchy, really annoying, and it's hard to get rid of hives as well, and you just don't know why you get them. I lost a lot of weight. I went from about 57 kilos down to about 40 or 42 kilos. I was, um, yeah, my gut wasn't working properly. I had chronic fatigue, and as you do as a parent, I just kept on going into work um, until one day I had this big crash, and I just couldn't even, you know, get up or do anything. So I went to the doctor's, and I went through what I found to be quite a complex medical system. I was going from doctor to doctor, lots of specialists, lots of clumps of hair, lots of needles and scans, and then eventually I was diagnosed with a non-specific autoimmune disease. Apparently there are lots of them, and they couldn't tell me exactly which one it was. They said it was kind of across a few different ones. And something called fibromyalgia. Has anyone heard of that, fibromyalgia? Yeah, a few of you. Does anyone have it? I know you have it. Anyone else? It's kind of like if you don't really know about it, it's sort of like when you wake up and you feel really stiff, like an 80-year-old woman, and it's like arthritis, like everything kind of hurts in your body. And so they diagnosed me with that, the doctors. I was in St. Vincent's for about three months, off and on. And they put me on this cocktail of drugs, like literally immunosuppressants, anti-inflammatories, lots of steroids, lots of different drugs, 20 pills a day I had to swallow. And for me, it was really difficult because I couldn't kind of um, decipher between the side effects of the medication and the symptoms of the sort of the autoimmune and fibro that I had. And um, I spoke to my doctors and I said, you know, does it have anything to do with diet? Because I did notice I was eating certain things. And at the ABC, it was a really busy job. So I would be eating lean cuisine, a lot of processed foods, MSG, lots of chemicals. And they were the things I, I found that I was kind of really reacting to. And they said, no, no, nothing to do with diet at all. It has nothing to do with diet. Just 
keep on eating this hospital food, which, might I add, was like, you know, two pieces of stale white bread, some plastic cheese, those revolting desserts with every number in them. I felt like the food actually made me feel worse in hospital. But I said to them, I did a deal with them, and I said, look, if it has got something, the symptoms, you know, to do with diet, can I change my diet a little bit? And then if I do improve, can I kind of slowly wean myself off that medication? And they said, yeah, that's fine, you can do that. So that's kind of what I did, and I went home and started to change my diet. I took a few things at the time out of my diet. I took out gluten, which really affected my gut at the time. I cut down on a lot of sugar because they were making me really itchy, the hives really itchy. And um, I started to eat and cook more sort of fresh foods. And I, I started my little blog. I'd been out to see that movie, Julie and Julia. Have you guys seen that movie? Yeah. It's quite inspiring. It's really cute. And it was about seven or eight years ago. So I thought it would be really fun to have a little blog and then maybe just share my recipes with people. And my family were like, you should put your recipes up and then, you know, we can find your recipes easily. So I, I started this blog and it was like two pages long on WordPress. And it was amazing because... People from all over the world found my blog. I don't know how they did it, but they had the same story as me. And I, I felt really comforted in that. And we were kind of sharing information. And we created this amazing community of people who kind of had like-minded views. And when I was in hospital, actually, what's quite interesting is my friend Cleo came in. And she handed me this DVD. And it was the Food Matters DVD. And I started watching it, and that's what made me really think. You know, I'd studied nutrition before, but when I was in nutrition school, honestly, what we learnt was sugar was good and carbs were good and, you know, all these kinds of things. It was completely different to what I was experiencing, you know, seven years ago. So she handed me the DVD, and I watched it, and I was like, there's something in this food is medicine. I really kind of, you know, believe that. I really feel that um, that's really working for me. And not only did I sort of at that time take things out, I added really good stuff in. So for me, those kind of ingredients that I added in were things very anti-inflammatory foods. And they're your key kind of beauty foods, I believe. Things like turmeric is a really great ingredient that I added in. I added in more garlic, more herbs and spices, just simple ingredients like everyday ingredients. And I actually started to really feel a lot better. So that's kind of my story and how I got into writing books. By the way, if you want to ask me any questions, feel free to just pop your hand up. Did you want to ask me something? No, you were just moving your hand, scratching your ear. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got really into blogging and writing books. Um, which I'm really loving doing. I just got married a year and a half ago. So I have a 22-year-old daughter now, but my husband has three sons between 11 and 17. So I'm back in the kitchen a lot now, and I'm cooking a lot, and I'm really loving it. So that's just a little bit about me. I also teach Hatha Yoga. Um, so the key to ageless beauty. For me, obviously, it's about supplying your body with the right nutrients and all of that, but you don't have to get too particular, I, th I believe, about all of those things. It's really about having a moderate and balanced diet and trying to eat fresh where you can, and food matters. We all know that. Um, for me, stress was a really big component, especially for fibromyalgia. They said, like, I notice when I do get really, really stressed, I feel maybe I'm starting to get a bit achy again. So keeping the stress levels down, I think, especially for fibro or autoimmune, for me, um, I realized that that was a big component as well. So I um, became a yoga teacher and I do a bit of meditation. And obviously you guys coming here and doing beautiful practices here is really obviously really good for you. And I feel that that's a big key to aging beautifully. Um, inflammation, obviously anti-inflammatory diet. So I'm gonna talk through a few foods that I like to use in my own kitchen for anti-inflammatory. I think about, um, for me, I've discovered, like I've gone down a few routes, to be honest, like I looked at different things like paleo and keto, but for me, it always comes back to just everyone is different, you know, listen to your body, what works for me may not work for you, so it's just about a balanced diet for me now, so I have a bit of, pretty much a bit of everything. Um, there's so many things like keto and paleo that for women, sometimes it's hard on their bodies, hard on their hormones. Um, good for men, but for women, not always that great. So it just, just choose the one that kind of suits you and suits your lifestyle, that, that kind of diet. And obviously, staying positive and enjoying yourself. My granny, she passed away last year. She was 103. And I was like, what, what are your keys to, you know, aging well and that kind of thing? She was on no medication or anything. And she just said, have a job that you really love and you're really passionate about. Have fun, have a giggle, and just try and cook your own food if you can and just eat sort of, you know, moderately healthily, and that was, they, they were her keys, which I thought were really cool. Um, how to get started. So who here is kind of uh, really into healthy food and has a good routine, or who needs a few tips? 
Anyone need a few tips? A few tips? Okay, I've got a few tips. For me, what I do is I like to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and think about the foods that make you feel good. I was talking about the foods before that make me feel good, but some of them are healthy foods that make me feel bad. So when I had all the gut issues before I healed my gut, it was things like avocado that would make me feel really sick and make me feel really bloated. So even if it's a good food, it may not be good for you. So find those foods that don't trigger you and find those foods that make you feel good and use more of those. Um, what I do in my own kitchen is, on Sundays, I fast twice a week too, so I do intermittent fasting, which I spoke about yesterday. But in my kitchen on a Sunday, that's where I kind of get really organised. And I know, like everyone talks about, you know, I'm, I'm a busy sort of mum and all of that, but I find organisation for me really is the key. So on Sunday, I'll do a big batch cook, and what I'll do is I'll do my shepherd's pie with cauliflower mash, and then I'll make granola, and then that granola will last like a couple of weeks. But with the granola, I'll make it into um, supercharged muesli bars, and then I'll use the granola to put on yogurt for the kids and fruit and things like that. So I try and make all of my recipes just go further, and I can use more and more ingredients to sort of, you know, pump them up the next day. So that's what I kind of do. I make, um, I eat a lot from the freezer, so I make a whole bunch of things. Like I'll make a bread recipe. I've got a great new bread recipe, by the way. I just put it up last week. It's my golden gut bread. So please try and make it, it's on, the, it's on the website, you'll find it there. It's so delicious, golden gut bread. Yeah, supercharged golden gut bread. Um, Superchargedfood.com is the website, by the way, but it's really, really yummy. You can keep it in the fridge, and that is a, that's a good one to use as well. So I'll make those base recipes, and then I'll eat from the freezer through the week. Because I work full-time, I'm a busy mum as well, so that's kind of how I get prepared. Um, in terms of shopping... How do you guys shop? Do you sort of shop online or for your groceries? Is that what you... What do you guys do? Beg your pardon? Supermarket? Yeah, me too. Most of my stuff... Well, a lot of my stuff supermarket-based and then I kind of have some stores that I like to buy other things as well. And what I try and do is I try and have all my basics, so like cans of tomato, you know, my grains if I'm using like quinoa, that kind of stuff, cans of coconut milk, some tamari, some apple cider vinegar, some good olive oil, good quality olive oil. I kind of just have those basics and then I just work around it. That's sort of what I do. What do you do? Yeah, I do the same. same, yeah. I find that's kind of the easiest way to do it. And then you've got stuff in your store cupboard and you can just add fresh ingredients to it as well. And as I said, if you go on the website, there's so many different recipes that are easy like that with those base ingredients that you can just add other ingredients to. Um, experiment with recipes. There are so many great bloggers books and everything online, so find those bloggers and recipes you like and just don't be afraid to just get into the kitchen and have a bit of fun. I mess up all the time in the kitchen, so just experiment, you know, don't, don't feel that you can't do it, just go in and have a bit of fun and, and try and make it fun. I find cooking actually quite therapeutic, do you guys, anyone here? I find it like when I get home from work, like I find it quite, it chills me out after you put music on and you can have a bit of fun, so... I hope I'm inspiring you to get back into the kitchen and maybe try a few recipes. And obviously with, um, with beautifying foods, it's a lot of your green greens and fibres and berries and things like that. So if you can do, say, a smoothie in the morning, that's a really great thing to do for beauty as well. Any questions so far? No? Okay. Choosing foods. So omitting those trigger foods, that's what I was talking about before, the ones that aggravate you. For me, those things are like MSG is probably one of the worst ones for me. Just makes me come out in a rash. Actually, for me, fermented foods aren't that good either because I have a histamine issue. So for some people with histamine issues, fermented foods are really, really too hard on the gut. So yeah, just try and find out what those foods are. You can use foods as medicinal aids. We talked before a little bit about garlic. Garlic I love, I use a lot. Turmeric, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as well. And that's what I said, everyone has a theory, paleo, keto, blah, blah, blah. With the keto diet, in my view, there's not enough prebiotic-rich veggies in there. So everyone's going keto, but they're not getting their gut microbiome healthy and robust and diverse. So that's just my own personal view on some of those more kind of strict diets. Listen to your body. Um, and then I'm 50, so... I think that my health insurance now is trying to eat a good diet, in a balanced diet, and then hopefully in the future it'll cut down on medical bills. That's what I think. What to avoid. So some of the things when I was really sick and I was trying to get better, 
The things that I avoided that were detrimental to me at the time were things like um, soy was a big one. Soy just made me feel really sick and really tired. My gut didn't like soy at all. It's also, um, some research is pointing to that it's not great for hormone health. Some people say it is great. There's so much conjecture, don't you think, about soy and all of these things, but it is heavily processed. So if you think about just trying to go a bit more natural, that's good too. Um, processed foods, again, a lot of those sort of additives, the chemicals. On my website, I've got a whole list of all the numbers. So you can check on my website to see what numbers are in things. And if it's got all these numbers in it, you probably, it sounds like it's come out of a lab and it's not kind of fresh. So you want to try and go for as fresh as possible. Sugar, for me, at the time when I was kind of really cleaning up my act, sugar was very inflammatory and it kind of made me really itchy, so that's why I took it out. But cutting down on sugar, you know, long term, is a good thing to do if you can. And I kind of use, in terms of sugars, I'll use a bit of coconut sugar, I'll use raw honey, I'll use a bit of rice malt here and there. So I do use sugar. I think the body needs a bit of sugar, but I try and choose healthier kind of versions of sugar. That's what I do. Um, table salt, really, really processed. So if you can get into more like sea salt or river salt, they're really good. What do you guys use? Celtic salt. Celtic salt. What about you? Himalayan. Himalayan. Someone said to me this morning, they emailed me on my blog and they said, I don't like the air miles with um, Celtic and Himalayan. And they're like, what can we use? And then I was thinking about what are some of the... Do you guys know any good salts? There's the Murray River salt, I think is good. Beg your pardon? Olson. Olson. Thank you, I'll let them know. Yeah, because if, you, yeah, if you're worried about that, then you can um, sort of buy more locally kind of salts. Caffeine is fine, like in moderation, like cup of coffee. Why would you not want to have a coffee if you love it? But five cups a day is really not that great for your adrenals. And it's not a great beauty food. It can really sort of mess with your skin. So. And obviously, sort of processed fats are not that great either. So good fats, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more now. These are my top seven anti-aging foods, which I absolutely love. Berries I use a lot in my kitchen. So obviously berries are good because you've got the antioxidants and the vitamin C, so it's really, really good for sort of free radicals and that kind of thing. Wild salmon and flax seeds, both high in omega-3. So what I find when I was sort of um, improving my health, what I found was a sort of a moderate fat diet was really good. It sort of when I lost my hair, my skin was terrible, and then I started eating very anti-inflammatory. My hair started to grow back. My skin was so much better. I feel like good fats really kind of plump up the skin and get rid of a lot of those sort of wrinkles. I've got no work or anything like that. You know, I'm just completely natural, and I feel like a good, not too many good fats, but a moderate amount is really good as you get older. Like being 50, you want to sort of um, have a few good fats, which is good. Dark leafy greens are really good, obviously, for the gut, and the gut is a big part of, um, of beauty as well. So your, your skin is just your barometer for what is really going on inside and going on in your gut. I've got a whole program, a book about healing the gut, if you're interested in gut health. I could talk about gut health forever, but leafy greens are good because they're obviously full of fibre and they get everything moving through the body, and that's what you want to do. You want to detox so your skin is nice and bright and um, beautiful. And then sardines. Sardines are good because they have calcium and magnesium. And magnesium is really good if you have oily skin, really too much oil in your skin. Magnesium is a good sort of mineral to have there. And we talked about flax seeds and garlic I love. Garlic is good for skin infections as well. It's antifungal, antiviral. I know you guys know all of this stuff, so I'm not going to like um, talk too much about it. I have a little section here. I don't know if anyone here suffers from dry hair, like brittle hair. You do? Um, I wrote some notes on this, actually. Brittle hair. We've got B12. That's one of the best sort of um, vitamins for um, brittle hair. So you can get that. Are you a vegetarian? No. So you can get that through animal sources like eggs and chicken, B12. Anyone here vegetarian? You can get it through nutritional yeast flakes. I don't know if you use those. Yeah, you guys use those. But they're good. They're a high um, B12 food, so that's really good too. Um, so that's a good one if you have dry hair. Red eyes. Who uses um, eye drops here? You do sometimes. So when you're using those artificial eye drops, they're actually in the long run making your eyes redder. And you, they're actually quite addictive. And the more you use them, the more that you have to use them. Um, so if you can stay away from those artificial eye drops, that's a good thing. Um, and also with red eyes, alcohol is probably one of the worst things um, for red eyes as well. Sorry, guys, but you can have a drink in moderation. Um, bloating. 
that's obviously also your probiotic rich food. So things like if you're into it, like kimchi and kombucha and those kinds of foods. Or for me, I take a probiotic capsule. Um, that's what I do sort of for my um, probiotics. And also bloating, um, it sounds contradictory, but drinking water is actually really good for bloating. And then sort of de-bloating foods are things like cucumber and celery. So there are some great foods that if you do suffer from bloating. The worst things for bloating are things like chewing gum. Artificial sugars are terrible. I don't know if you guys have them, eat them here, but yeah, if you do suffer from bloating, have a look at some of the artificial sugars. You can get them in the low calorie kind of snack bars and things like that, and they kind of make you feel bloated afterwards. Um, sun damaged skin, I've got that here. Aloe vera and lemon juice. So I used to have like all sun damage on here, and guess what I did? I just put literally lemon and apple cider vinegar and it all went away. You know how as you get older you get the sun like pigment spots? So that's what I did, lemon and apple cider vinegar. And apparently aloe vera is quite good for it as well. So that's one too. Um, wrinkles, um, obviously good fats as well. We spoke about that before. Pigmentation, if you can try and eat more sort of orange foods, things like pumpkin, oranges, that's really, really good. They're obviously also high in vitamin C, but it's good for pigmentation too. And also just do that thing with the lemon and the... I couldn't believe that that would actually work. Did you? How often? I just did it every day for about six weeks and I couldn't believe that they all went away. Yeah, it's funny, huh? What was the concentration like? Uh, I, was, I, I would pour it into a cap of the apple cider vinegar thing, just pour it in and then just half and half and then just, just rub it on and dab it on. It smells a bit like the apple cider vinegar, but, but it did work. Yeah, I just read it online and I thought, I'll give that a go and it actually works. So I was quite surprised that that, that would work. And then dark circles, um, that could be a sign of too much salt in your diet. So you want to have those sort of um, diuretic rich foods as well, like the um, celery and the cucumber is good. And acne, um, zinc obviously is very, very good for acne. Um, yeah, so zinc kind of foods. Um, who likes oysters? There's, yeah, sunflower seeds, those kinds of things, a high in zinc. There we go. Um, super skin, hair and nails. So keeping hydrated is always good. Leafy greens, fiber rich foods, getting everything moving through. And silica is a really amazing mineral, which is in my Heal Your Gut Powder, which is here, or Love Your Gut Powder, and these. That's 85% silica, and I've noticed since taking that, it, my hair, skin and nails have, have never been better. So the silica is really good. So if you can find some silica-rich foods, that's also very helpful. <coughs> How to get the glow. This is kind of what... I went to um, India and I studied Ayurveda because I'm half Indian, and I went there and I, I did a cooking, nutrition, and Ayurvedic course. And these are some of the practices that I learned when I was over in India that I found, and I started to incorporate them, and, they, and I found them really quite beneficial. Um, enjoying good fats. Oil pulling. Does anyone do that here? Oil pulling? Yes, a few of you. What oil do you use? Coconut. Coconut? Coconut. In India, what it is, for those of you that don't know what oil pulling is, it's where you put a tablespoon of oil in your mouth and then you just swish it around and then for about... You're supposed to do it for how long? Like 20 minutes or something? I can only handle like 5 or 10 minutes, but apparently you have a lot of like bacteria in your mouth and it's linked to your gut, and by swishing it out and then spitting it out, you're clearing all of that, which is, yeah, quite incredible. But they do that a lot in India, but they do it with sesame oil. That's what they use there. But some people like to use a coconut oil because it's antiviral and antifungal as well. So some people like to do that to really get the glow. Um, lemon in warm water, everyone knows about that. Um, Epsom salts baths, who does that here? Yes. yes, I love them. Plus they're like super relaxing, don't you think, if you just have a nice... But the magnesium sulfate in those actually draws a lot of junk out of your skin. So that's really good if you want blush. And dry body brushing or dry skin brushing. I learned that one in, when I was in India. Just brushing up to the heart in one direction um, is supposed to really stimulate, um, stimulate your adrenals and just um, stimulate everything and you get rid of a lot of sort of the lymphatic system. It actually helps the lymphatic system. So, um, yeah, a few ideas on how... And these are just cheap and easy and simple ways that if you feel like incorporating them, you can to kind of get a bit of glow. Do you feel inspired yet? Yes. Oh, yes? Good, good, good. I'm on the right track. 
Um, I wanted to show you a few ways that I swap out things in my kitchen so that you get the benefits of a few more sort of nutrients from your food. So these are the, some of the things that I do. So instead of using, you know, like iceberg lettuce, what I do is I'll use kale or baby spinach. And so it's got a, just a little bit more fibre, a bit more iron, and uh, it's a bit better for you. Um, on my um, shepherd's pie, I'll use... For the kids, I'll use half potato and half cauliflower, or for me, I'll just use cauliflower. Um, so that's a little bit healthier using that as well. Um, I use cauliflower for a lot of things. The pizza bases, I know they're like really popular now, aren't they? Um, but that's, cauliflower's really good. Um, for the kids as well, I put flax seeds on their cereal, but I also put them into muffins as well, and I also sneak kind of like veggies, and I sneak zucchini into the muffins and carrots and celery, and they can hardly honestly notice. They don't ever say anything about it. Maybe they're just being nice, but that's kind of how I do it with kids. Um, flax seeds are really good. I love flaxseed oil. Today I'm going to make a soup. Oh, no, it's got hemp in it, but you could use flaxseed oil in, in my soup that I'm going to make today. Um, cutting back on coffee, if you are thinking about, like if you're having like five cups a day and you want a good alternative, I find that dandelion tea is really good and it has that kind of earthy sort of nice taste to it. Does anyone here drink dandelion tea? No? Yeah, you can buy it in Woolies or Coles. It's a yellow, Kintra Foods do one and there's another, I um, can't remember the name of the company, but you can just buy it. And it's a really good liver detoxer. So, And it has a nice flavour as well. It has a kind of chicory kind of um, earthy flavour. So if you want to swap out one of your afternoon coffees, maybe that's a, something that you could try. Oh, you don't drink coffee? No, green tea. Green tea. That's good. That's really good for skin as well, the antioxidants in um, green tea. Yeah. Um, and then I use a bit of coconut oil and coconut flour. Not too much, but, you know, I swap everything. I change everything all the time. And also with milks, you know how some people just go, I'm just doing almond milk. I reckon, personally, because I did this big gut summit and all the major doctors said to me, diversity, 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 high plant-based and Mediterranean diet, that that was their three main things. Um, so I think just, if you're having almond milk on a granola with, it's just too many nuts, don't you think? It's like you need just a bit of everything. So swap out, I always go coconut milk one week, almond one week, dairy sometimes the next week, or yeah. I just really mix it up a lot. And um, nuts are really good too, if you like a snack. But there are heaps of really cool snack recipes on my website as well. This is sort of my shopping list that I kind of generally, when I go shopping, what I get, obviously all the veggies. I do eat meat personally. Um, I just find it helps with iron levels for me. And seafood, and there's eggs, and the different flowers, and the fruits, and the herbal teas. And I grow my own in my house. I have like a herb wall. I just created it, so I just... And I'm growing a few veggies as well. I'm, I'm growing tomatoes and cucumber and rocket and strawberries and things like that. So it's, I've only got like a little backyard, but I've got like a wall, which is really fun. Um, the shopping list, all the resources, everything meal planners, they're all on the website and they're all free. Just go in and find the recipes. Um, what are your thoughts on RGF1 in meat? Oh, I've heard about that. Um, you know what? I'm not, I'm not someone who... Um, puts a microscope on their diet anymore like I used to. So now I don't really think about or worry about certain things like that. Yeah, that's what... What are your thoughts on it? Oh, well, they say it's bad if you yeah. have got breast cancer. Yeah. I think that if you are going through something like that, it is good to have a look at your diet and see where you can make improvements. But, um, yeah, eggs have so many other great benefits as well. So I think, yeah, if you, I think it's just about m making your... being the sort of owner of your own health and speaking to your doctors and finding out what really works well for you. Otherwise, because I found, like, when I was really sick, I was like had a microscope on my diet a bit because I was worried like when I ate something that it would make me get the hives again or make... But now I've realised that it's better just to have a more balanced approach just for me. That's what we're... Any other questions about that? No? Um, I've got some ideas for breakfast. Some just a few ideas that you can do. Um, obviously smoothies are really good, veggie juices. I've got some great porridge recipes on the website with buckwheat. I've got oat porridge. I've got all these different porridge recipes that you can find. Chia seed puddings are really easy, like you can make them the night before. I've got overnight smoothies and the smoothie bowl we're going to do today is really easy, so you'll be able to recreate that. 
The spinach toast is fun because that's where you're getting a lot of your thing. It's literally three ingredients. It's spinach, it's egg, and if you want, you can put some garlic in it. And you bake it flat in the oven and then you slice it into... Like, for some people that don't like a lot of flour, you can slice it up and just have it as toast and it's really yummy. You can have it with avocado. I've even got a spinach ice cream recipe and it actually doesn't... No, it actually tastes... Honestly, it tastes really good because you put mint in it and it actually... You can't even taste the spinach. I've got a cauliflower cheesecake recipe as well, which is really yummy. And honestly, you can't even taste the cauliflower. Honestly, you really can't. No, that it tastes really good. So there's a few ideas for breakfast and lunch. These are all kind of vegan ones, but or vegetarian ones, but obviously for lunchtime, I'll send this to you so you can get some ideas and then you can look them up on the website. But they're all super easy to make. And some dinner ideas. I've got a spiralizer at the moment, so I've been doing a lot of that sort of spiralized noodles and koodles and um, zucchini noodles and carrot and things like that, which is always fun for the kids. They love it. That's my um, caramelized onion tart, which is so delicious. It's really yummy if you're into that kind of thing. And the, I think the pastry is made with a bit of buckwheat and almond meal. And it's really nice. It's kind of flaky and it's not... You know how sometimes you eat really healthy stuff and it just doesn't taste good? I try and make my recipes um, taste as nice as possible. And then, now we're going to do some cooking. Um, feeling good? Yeah. yeah, ready? Okay. What I might do first is my chilled avocado soup. Now, I only created this recipe a couple of weeks ago because I was doing a little video for the website and I created it because I had like extra avocado. So, um, it's super duper easy. Um, any questions while we're just getting this together? Yep. Yeah, I know, that's a problem. How do I avoid smelling um, with garlic? Parsley is apparently really good. Yeah, eating parsley, fresh parsley afterwards. Um, I think people are used to it with me now. <laughs> it sounds terrible, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, parsley is one way that some people... For me, at the time, I'm good now because I've kind of worked on my gut and I, I can have it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This morning I had at Hempel, I had the avocado toast, and yeah, that was delicious. Have you guys been to Hempel? Yeah, it's good here. Oh, the hives. Oh, that was the worst. I, would, I literally would be at the ABC sitting in meetings with ice packs, like just all over me. So I found that the, once I sort of really looked at my gut and improved the health of my gut, the hives started going away. It was almost like they were autoimmune kind of reaction to the things that I was eating. So when I cleaned up my diet, the hives disappeared. I, ne I never get them anymore, but they were literally all over my body. I look like the elephant woman. So what sort of food you sugar? Yeah, sugar was a big one for making them itch even more, but I think I was maybe reacting to some of the chemicals in the foods that I was eating, and that was giving me hives, but it could have been also to do with the gut. So once I did clean up the gut, I noticed that the hives disappeared. Yeah. It took a while, though. I have to say, sorry, James. It wasn't an overnight thing. All of this sort of stuff kind of took, you know, a year to sort of rebuild my guard and my diet. And, and now I'm operating at 90%, which is really good. Like, I still get fibro now and again. And it's funny, I get it when... Who, you have fibro too, don't you, Tanya? I get it when there's a change in temperature, so from hot to cold, which is really bizarre, don't you think? Like, um, a change in weather. I get it, it comes on. And then... Sometimes, when you're really stressed, it can come on as well. So, yeah, just try and keep all that at bay. Who's ready to... James is going to help me, I think. I'm ready to assist. You ready to rock? Yes. Okay. So, what are we going to do first? The um, smoothie. Yeah. So, this is a smoothie bowl. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I lost an S. It's okay. My, oops. I've dropped an S. I'll just pick it up. It's, not, um, it's like play school, isn't it? Where's the S, children? <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. There we go. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this without a handheld. Okay, I might get you to, yeah, do that. Okay. Um, let's do the soup first. So, okay. literally, this is so easy. You're pretty much just throwing everything into the blender. And this blender is apparently is really good. It's the Nutribullet Super Duper. RX, which yeah, is like the, the drug Nutribullet. Isn't RX like a prescription? <laughs> is it the drug, is is it? drugged up Nutribullet? Um, 
Okay, so two avocados, throwing yes. them in. Yeah, okay. let's throw it. Oh, there's only one here. Is there another one? Oh, oh yeah, there's one there. Okay. I'll just scoop here. it out. And Exemplar throw it in. number two. I normally put, when I'm using the blender, the <laughs> sort of um, the nuts or whatever, things like that, that are harder to blend in first. Because I was doing a demo once, and then remember, it was with you last year, yeah. remember? Yeah, and we I couldn't really get, oh, it was so embarrassing. I just realized how <laughs> useless I am here. I'm just commentating. I've got, I'm like, that's good, Lee. Good job. Yeah. Good job. We, two avocados. Two avocados. In, we couldn't get, like, we couldn't get, we were making a chocolate mousse, I remember. Do you remember? And, and it wouldn't blend. But it wasn't this model. Like it, was it was the one that just goes like that, and you have to open it to get it to. So embarrassing. Yeah, there's no, there's no tamper. And then you were like, yeah, it's being streamed live across America. As is this. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure or anything. Okay, so avocados going Two in. Two avocados. Two avocados. Good going healthy in. fats. Um, yeah, good healthy fats, and also kind of with avocados, you do have a bit of a window with them, don't you? That's true. Can you do your window joke. Yeah, okay, it's okay, like. It's got a window joke. Too hard. <laughs> too hard. Too. I'm ready. Too late. <laughs> Yeah, that's his avocado the life, window joke. The life of an avocado. A um, little bit of sea salt. Pinch of, did we do the milk yet or not? No, I reckon we just throw in some sea salt first. Okay, just a sea, little salt pinch first. Of sea salt first. Is there Gives sea salt nice out flavor. over there yet or not? No. No, I no. think that's okay. the There we go, there. pinch of sea salt. Pinch of sea salt. And then, oh, we're going to use Isn't the golden gut salt? blend. Yeah. Or is that yeast flakes? Oh, that's yeast flakes. I was going to say. Oh, no, that's going on top. Is there any in here? Oh, no, that's that's, all, that's hemp, the hemp oil. hemp oil. Okay, that's all right. Anyway, just pretend we've just put the sea salt in. Oh, here it is. Oh, here we go. There, there we go. go. Sorry, oh. Sorry guys. This Lucky I'm really here. <laughs> okay, a little there bit you of go. pinch of nice salt. Bit. You guys can taste this, by the way, afterwards. I think you'll like it. Half Definitely. a lemon juiced. Half a lemon juice. Yep. Um, easiest way, and I don't even have a fork, but if you had a fork, you'd just put it in and go like that. That's mm -hmm. the easiest way to get um, juice out of it. Okay, lemon. great. A half a lemon, uh, then. One tablespoon of golden nut blend. Golden gut blend. Golden That's gut fine. blend. <laughs> golden cut. I am truly I doing a great job for you up here, Lee. Um, okay, golden gut blend. So this is um, the diatomaceous earth, and it's got cinnamon, and mm -hmm. it's got a bit of black pepper, and it's got some ginger in it. So this is my own blend that you can make lattes, you can make yeah, ice I'm helping, cream. I'm helping. There's a dry one. <laughs> you can make curries. You can make anything. So how much am I putting in? Two teaspoons? One tablespoon. One tablespoon. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, tablespoon. Any health store or... Online, and so at my website. And nutritional like yeast is for later. That's later. I'm okay. going to just decorate it with a bit of nutritional okay. yeast on top. and uh, some Two hemp. Ta teaspoons of hemp seed oil. I'm going to assume this is the hemp seed oil. It looks like it, and that looks like two teaspoons. Look at how helpful I am. Yeah, that's good. There we go. Yeah, that's good. And then some, just some coconut milk. Okay. But normally I use the other, um, the thicker coconut milk, but it's up to you what kind of. It might be a this bit runny, so I'm not going to. This is actually a rice coconut, so yeah, this the ingredients. Has got, did you know it had rice in it? This one. Mm. Everyone thinks it's coconut milk, but it's actually got mm, mm, brown. Mm, 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 mm. Read the ingredients. I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> there you go. Okay, because this isn't the thick coconut milk that's. So I'm you want to just start with a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to start with a little bit because you don't need that much. Okay. And then we're going to just do a bit of a whiz and okay. see. We might need to add some more avocado, but okay, here we go. Honestly, it does taste good. Block totally your ears. That's it. what I always Ready? say in my household. Here we go. Ooh. That's nice. Good. Here we go. Okay, we'll add a little bit more just to make it a nice sort of consistency well, and it'll look good in the bowl as Big well. Hatch yep, there we, there go. we go. Yeah, but you can make it any consistency. Oh, it just you gurgled. Like. There we go. Oh, did it? Yep. Shh. Who likes avocado here? Are you on the thing? There's a new cafe in Sydney. It's an avocado only cafe in Surrey Hills. Yeah, only avocado dishes. It's a pop up thing. Oh, really? That's good. No. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's no ever going there. Okay. Um, so and then we're just going to. We're going to serve it into this really gigantic easy. bowl. So that's how easy it is to make an that avocado. Is a big bowl, so literally huh? so easy. Sorry, did you want to ask something? Um, the yeah. can, yeah. And I use the I am one because it doesn't have preservatives. You know the blue one? Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know the one I mean, yeah. don't you? So there's your soup. And then Wait, what we're going to do. Them. That's it there. there. You go. It's really nice. It's like thick and runny. It actually it's runny. tastes, it does honestly taste really good. And then what I generally do is throw a bit of a like a drizzle. I just like to drizzle a little bit on top. It's a horrible like word, that. isn't it? Drizzle. I don't mind. Drizzle. I know. It's not as bad and as then, moist. Can I put my hand in here? Mo yeah, that's pretty bad. Or crevice. What? <laughs> crevice. Crevice? <laughs> crevice? That's like a rock climbing term. Yeah. Unless I mistook you for something, I'm not sure. And there we go. And then you can decorate that with a bit of flat. I can't um, show you without it tipping out. Or some but coriander. I love coriander. Quick Hands look. up here who loves coriander. 
good. Yeah, I love coriander too. Okay, we've so got some questions over Who wants here. to try? Can we give them yeah, we, we, a little... Yeah, we are legally able to try it if you say before you try it that if something happens, it's not our fault. Yeah, are you okay to try it? Yeah, have a go. I haven't actually taste tested it, but... <clears throat> I'm sure it's, yeah, it's I'm good. excited. That's yeah. a tiny bit. Are you fasting? <laughs> I'm double, no. Yeah, no. I'm double dipping, though. It's all right. We're all friends. It's all right. Go. Yeah. Big scoop. Big scoop. Big too. scoop. Have a go. I want to get a real response. Can I ask what nutritional yeast is? I mean, I don't use it recently. Yeah, it's like a... Yeah, it's, it's, a it's like great. It's, it's not great the kind of yeast that feeds it's candida. Awesome. It's, it's awesome. a non-activated kind of yeast. That so we, has a really cheesy, nutty flavour and great for on pizza. So we got awesome, delicious, and then after that we got a yum. Oh, yeah. Yay. That's four servings, right? Yeah. So but I, you know what? Like I usually use thicker milk and 600 mils, so I didn't put 600 mils oh, of that in. Like, so that is like no, Do we no, need no. the blender That's again? Like what I need. Yeah. Does it need to be cleaned? Yeah. Can I have a runner, yeah. please, to clean the blender? Actually, no, no, no. You know no? what? We'll do with the golden bowl with the green in it. Is that okay? Do you mind if we do? It's we, just going to have a tinge a bit... I don't know. What do you think? Should we? No, let's run it. Let's okay, clean let's it up. Let's we make can, sure we, we get it all out first because we don't want to like waste um, anything because Sarah Wilson's still in the room. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, what are you doing? Oh, my God. She's really good with the face. Food there we go. Waste There's like about 1% waste there, Sarah. Um, does anyone else, would anyone else like a taste while we're getting that clean? Come up. I do have Come some other get spoons. Get amongst it. Get amongst it. Get a do German we have spoon. Any spoons? Oh, maybe we're pretty low on spoons. Yeah. Let's save a couple There's for us. I think these have been used, actually. So, so let's yep. let's start. Let's start. Yep. While everyone's digging in here, can we jump yep. to the next recipe? Have a look. Let's jump to the. I know you. Yep, you're in. Okay. Home. So next recipe: golden um, gut mango smoothie bowl. What are the what is what's the feedback so far? Mm. Yum! Oh, really good. Yum! Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. it's so easy, hey. Just like that literally nachos. took how long? Like needs two nachos, minutes? apparently. <laughs> One or two minutes. <laughs> Avocado soup, really great. It needs something summer. with zero nutritional value, like corn, <laughs> to just balance out all that rich nutrition. Yeah, it is pretty. It's quite thick, but but it's nice in summer. But this is a little go. bit thicker than I normally use. Like okay, no more tasting. I want some. Okay. No, it's all right. Here you go. Mm. Nice, nice, really nice, good, good. All right. So next, we're going to do the golden. One. Okay. So ingredients for this, we've got some mango. Right. I'll leave it over frozen here. Frozen mango. So I'm going to put them here so you can kind of pass them to me and then you'll feel like okay, you're I can, doing I can something. contribute. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to stand on that side then? No, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. We're, we're going to decorate as well, which Thank will be you, really Tessa. fun. Thank you, So we've got um, banana. So frozen one, bananas. One frozen banana. Can I give a tip? Always peel the bananas before you put them in the freezer because yep. I have literally done that so many times. No, and wait, 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 wait. Always I take those little black bits off the end too. Oh, really? Yeah. I just use everything. I can't do it. I've only got one you hand. Can't. Okay. okay. I, I just <laughs> I thought you meant I can't do I'm it. I'm directing can't do here, it really. That, yeah, look, okay. yeah, the black okay. bit. Throw, yeah, I hate that bit. How much we I dislike that bit. Hate's yeah. the wrong term. We're in a yeah. conscious community here. What, what's wrong with the black bit? Is there something wrong? Like, is it bad for you? It's not light, it's dark. Okay. <laughs> you know what? So, I might use all the ingredients and then we can make a big one and then everyone can share it. Sound oh, good? So we're, we're going off grid yeah. here. We're going off. Off, going off script. Off. I'm just so one it. frozen banana or two. Yep. yep. Um, one golden gut blend. teaspoon of golden more. nut blend. Gut okay, blend, golden I'm nut just... blend. Golden gut blend. I'm going to use a bit of this. Don't get me on direct sales on TV. I'd be hopeless. <laughs> TVSN. And if you buy the skincare today... <laughs> Okay, there we go. Half yeah. a cup of coconut or full fat dairy yeah, yogurt. Yeah, dairy. What kind of yogurt do you guys have? Do you do coconut or coconut? I do coconut yeah, and do I do goat yogurt. Yeah, I do goat. I love goat yogurt. Yeah. I like that. There's a barren bar one I really like. Do you know I was on a panel once at a Conscious Expo in Los Angeles and, and everyone yeah. got asked the question, what's the one food that you would want if you were on a desert island? And everyone was so conscious, like coconuts, spirulina. And yeah. I'm like, I'd want a goat. And they were like, what? Yeah. I, I get do. milk and companionship. <laughs> and and I, I like won the goats. debate, I thought. Goats are cool. But then they were like, that's gonna... not the... I wasn't, I wasn't going to eat the goat. I was just going to like... <laughs> hang out with it. Partake with part of its milk and hang out with it. I'm going to throw in some frozen mango too. Okay. But you can just use um, Take it easy. fresh if you want. Um, the thing with smoothie bowls, by the way, is you want it thick enough so you, all your pretty toppings um, stay, but you don't want it too thick so that you can't kind of mm. spin it in the blender. So, And if it's we'll too thin, out. it's not for Instagram. <laughs> exactly. It's not, for it's Instagram. not Instagram friendly. <laughs> so we've got the mango chunks and two um, ta tablespoons of almond butter. And then almond butter. Where is that? Here. I'm going to throw a bit of this in as well. 
Bit of almond butter or, you know, any peanut butter, whatever kind of mm. nut butter mm. you like. Mm. Favourite nut butters, quick survey. Peanut. Peanut. Mm. Peanut. Peanut. Mm. Not a huge Anyone fan. Anyone else? Brazil Not, nut know? butter. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Um, new kind of milk that I really like at the moment mm -hmm. is um, sunflower seed. Okay. Milk. Nice. Yeah. House made. Yeah. I just make cool. it. I, it's kind of green, but it's nice. Um, Two tablespoons of flaxseed meal, great for balancing hormones. Flaxseed meal, okay. Yeah. Bringing that testosterone down, testosterone down, tough ladies. Yep. Done. Okay, what's next? It is good for that. Uh, pinch of milk. salt. Pinch of pinch salt. Of salt. The what's salt? that? That's a lot of salt. Oh, <laughs> whoops, I put too much coconut milk in. Oops. That's a splash of coconut milk. Uh, um, the salt's just salt there. Yep. Okay. This just gives, it brings out the sweetness. Salt, when you just add salt to something, it brings a bit of sweetness. I'm hoping that this is going to be nice and sort of thick enough to top, but okay. we're ready to go. Oh, so we've got we a lid here. Throw that in there and the I'm button? going to grab the ball and press the button. Okay, so this is so easy, you just, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's a, yeah, that's nice. Good. Yeah. It smells kind of rubbery. <laughs> nice, yeah. I think that's, I think that's yeah. a winner. I think that's a winner. Feel, so that's easy. I can so feel it in my So it normally looks a bit more golden when you use less flaxseed, which is, sorry, I did use a bit of flaxseed, mm. but you it's, pour it in like that. It's thunny, it thick and runny. It does look a bit more golden. And then the fun bit is actually decorating it. And you can make this the night before and then decorate it in the morning, but... Yeah, make it sort of really pretty. So what I normally do is I just like to do kind of, you know, lines of mm -hmm. things like that. Do we that. need this again? No. Okay, cool. We don't need that. So you can kind of I'm decorate it. I'm that guy that's any. like, oh, I really want that. You know, like, <laughs> Are you I can't that do guy? that now. I can't do that. You're that guy. Just cameras watching and people watching. <laughs> and I've got to do a presentation after this and I'll have yep. gear all over me and that would not look very presentable. So there's that. And then I might get you... Oh, so this is here. These this are now officially, maybe this weekend, legal really? in Australia I'm for so human consumption. Isn't that, that amazing? Yeah. Australia and New Zealand are the last two countries in the world to legalise hemp for human consumption. Yeah. There and was literally happening. a map of the world and it was only Australia and New Zealand where it's been illegal. This is the most powerful food for humans ever known. Yeah, I love and it. And unfortunately, because of the plastic industry, they developed this campaign called Reefer Madness to basically discredit marijuana and hemp sort of in the same category. Um, hemp is a very powerful food. It's got a full range of uh, omega-3, omega-6, 9, great, great fatty acid ratio, and also got a complete protein profile. Mm. And it tastes delicious. And that's actually one of my best house-made nut milks. Mm. It's just two tablespoons of hemp seeds, yep. a little bit of coconut oil, pinch of salt, a little bit of vanilla, some water, blend it up, and Yum. you don't even have to strain it. It's literally once you I'm blend it, that when I get then home you get this frothy, hemp. white, beautiful milk, and the fat in combination, the coconut oil in combination with the hemp creates this perfect milk, and then you've got the milk, then you just put your smoothie ingredients on top. So you don't even actually have to have your store bought almond or coconut milks, so you can literally just so make good. it on the go. Um, so, so yeah, now legal just for human a consumption. Bit. That's so good. Actually, I was doing a talk in New Zealand a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and they said it was already legal there maybe in they, New Zealand. Maybe they yeah. beat us to something, those yeah, New maybe. Zealanders. Yeah. Um, that's what they kind of were saying. So anyway, that's kind of, you can just decorate it any way you like with so whatever beautiful. toppings you have at home. But that's your golden... If we show that to them, it might not tip on the crowd. There we go, look. Yeah, oh. there we go. So two that? simple, easy recipes that you can make um, in the morning or whenever, any time of the day, um, that make you feel good. They're really easy on the gut. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good for digestion and good for beauty. So cool. Who thinks they're going to make some of this? Avocado awesome. Food. Yay! Exciting. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's give it up for Lee Holmes, Thank rock star. You.